are you struggling to post your theory test or you just want to know what it's like well watch this video we got the guaranteed answers some of these questions and answers are going to come up in your theory test so go through it don't forget to like share and subscribe and go to the channel fmdriverschool.co.uk we're going to post loads more questions up on this site now these questions are from the official governing body dvsa um, so it's going to be exactly the same when you do do your theory test so as I said, um, go to the site fmdramaschool.co.uk and if you want to pass your theory test first time, um, we've got loads of tips on there, loads more videos on our channel, FM Driving School. It's just a button, click the button and it makes a big difference to our channel. Subscribe to our channel, FM Driving School. Why is it important to make full use of the slip road as you join a motorway? Because there's space available to turn round if you need to to allow you direct access to the overtaking lanes, to allow you to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left-hand lane, because you can continue on the hard shoulder. Try to join the motorway without affecting the progress of the traffic in the left-hand lane and always give way to traffic already on the motorway. At busy times, you may have to slow down to merge into slow-moving traffic. Why is it important to make full use of the slip road as you join a motorway? To allow you to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left-hand lane. You're in a built-up area at night and the road is well lit. Why should you use dipped headlights? So that you can see further along the road. So that you can go at a much faster speed. So that you can switch to main beam quickly so that you can be easily seen by others. You may be difficult to see when you're traveling at night, even on a well-lit road. If you use dipped headlights rather than side lights, other road users should be able to see you more easily. You're in a built-up area at night and the road is well lit. Why should you use dipped headlights? So that you can be easily seen by others. What should you do when you park at night on a road that has a 40 miles per hour speed limit? Park facing the traffic. Leave parking lights switched on. Leave dipped headlights switched on. Park near a street light. You must use parking lights when parking at night on a road or in a lay-by on a road with a speed limit greater than 30 miles per hour. You must also park in the direction of the traffic flow and not close to a junction. You must use parking lights when parking at night on a road or in a lay-by on a road with a speed limit greater than 30 miles per hour. You must also park in the direction of the traffic flow and not close to a junction. What should you do when you park at night on a road that has a 40 miles per hour speed limit? Leave parking lights switched on. You're going to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach the junction? Keep just left of the middle of the road. Keep in the middle of the road. Swing out to the right just before turning. Keep well to the left of the road. Your road position can help other road users to anticipate your actions. Keep to the left as you approach a left turn and don't swing out into the center of the road in order to make the turn easier. This could endanger oncoming traffic and may cause other road users to misunderstand your intentions. You're going to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach the junction? Keep well to the left of the road. You're looking for somewhere to park your vehicle. Neither you or your passenger are disabled. What should you do if the only free spaces are marked for disabled drivers? Use one of these spaces. Park in one of these spaces but stay with your vehicle. Use one of the spaces as long as one is kept free. Wait for a regular parking space to become free. It's illegal to park in a space reserved for disabled drivers unless you're permitted to do so. These spaces are provided for people with limited mobility who may need extra space to get in and out of their vehicle. You're looking for somewhere to park your vehicle. Neither you or your passenger are disabled. What should you do if the only free spaces are marked for disabled drivers? 
Wait for a regular parking space to become free. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have red and amber showing together? Pass the lights if the road is clear. Take care because there's a fault with the lights. Wait for the green light. Stop because the lights are changing to red. Be aware that other traffic might still be clearing the junction as you approach. A green light means you may go on, but only if the way is clear. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have red and amber showing together? Wait for the green light. What does this sign mean? Ring road. Mini roundabout. No vehicles. Roundabout. As you approach a roundabout, look well ahead and check all signs. Decide which exit you wish to take and move into the correct position as you approach the roundabout, signaling as required. What does this sign mean? Roundabout. What does this sign mean? Hump bridge. Humps in the road. Entrance to tunnel. Soft verges. These humps have been put in place to slow the traffic down. They're usually found in residential areas. Slow down to an appropriate speed. What does this sign mean? Humps in the road. You're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing. What signal will show next? Red and amber. Green alone. Amber alone. Green and amber. If you know which light is going to show next, you can plan your approach accordingly. This can help prevent excessive braking or hesitation at the junction. You're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing. What signal will show next? Red and amber. Which sign means no stopping? Stopping where this clearway restriction applies is likely to cause congestion. Allow the traffic to flow by obeying the signs. Which sign means no stopping? What shape are traffic signs giving orders? Road signs in the shape of a circle give orders. Those with a red circle are mostly prohibitive. The stop sign is octagonal to give it greater prominence. Signs giving orders must always be obeyed. What shape are traffic signs giving orders? You've just passed your first practical driving test. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? Retake only your theory test. Retake your theory and practical tests. Retake only your practical test. Reapply for your full license immediately. If you accumulate six or more penalty points within two years of gaining your first full license, it will be revoked. The six or more points include any gained due to offenses you committed before passing your test. If this happens, you may only drive as a learner until you pass both the theory and practical tests again. You've just passed your first practical driving test. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? Retake your theory and practical tests. What could you do to help injured people at an incident? Keep them warm and comfortable. Give them something to eat. Keep them on the move by walking them around. Give them a warm drink. There are a number of things you can do to help, even without expert training. Be aware of further danger from other traffic and fire. Make sure the area is safe. People may be in shock. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Keep them warm and comfortable and reassure them. Don't move injured people unless there's a risk of further danger. 
What could you do to help injured people at an incident? Keep them warm and comfortable. Following a collision, a person has been injured. What would be a warning sign for shock? Flushed complexion, warm dry skin, slow pulse, rapid shallow breathing. The effects of shock may not be immediately obvious. Warning signs to look for include, a rapid pulse, sweating, pale gray skin, rapid shallow breathing. Following a collision, a person has been injured. What would be a warning sign for shock? Rapid shallow breathing. At an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. How could you help them? Apply lotions to the injury, burst any blisters, remove anything sticking to the burns, douse the burns with clean, cool water. Your priority is to cool the burns with clean, cool water. Its coolness will help take the heat out of the burns and relieve the pain. Keep the wound doused for at least 20 minutes. If blisters appear, don't attempt to burst them, as this could lead to infection. At an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. How could you help them? Douse the burns with clean, cool water. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? In the vehicle handbook, in the highway code, in your vehicle registration certificate, in your license documents. You must know how to load your trailer or caravan so that the hitch exerts an appropriate downward force on the tow ball. Information about the maximum permitted nose weight can be found in your vehicle handbook or obtained from your vehicle manufacturer's agent. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? In the vehicle handbook. Why is there a warning reduce speed now? Traffic is merging from the left. There's a T-junction ahead. There's a crossroads and a double bend ahead. There's a staggered junction ahead. You'll see a sign warning you to slow down when you're approaching a part of the road where you need to be especially careful. For example, as you approach a roundabout, a crossroads or a bend. If you're traveling on a major road and coming up to a junction with a minor road, you should slow down, even if you don't want to turn. This is because another driver at the junction may not be able to see clearly and they could pull out in front of you. Check your speed as you approach a junction or a bend and be prepared to slow down or stop. Why is there a warning reduce speed now? There's a crossroads and a double bend ahead. Why has the line in the center of the road changed? To warn you the speed limit has changed. To warn of hazards ahead. To warn you there's a speed camera ahead. To warn you not to change lanes. White lines painted on the road give you information about where you may drive and when. The broken white line marks the boundary between lanes on your side of the dual carriageway. But when the lines start to lengthen, with shorter gaps, this warns you of a hazard coming up like a sharp bend? Watch out for changes in the road markings so you can prepare for the hazard ahead. Why has the line in the center of the road changed? To warn of hazards ahead. The driver towing the caravan wants to turn right onto the dual carriageway. What should they do? Move partly into the central reservation and wait until it's safe to turn. 
move out when an approaching driver flashes their headlights, turn left and find a suitable place to turn around, wait until the road is clear in both directions before turning. Before turning right onto a dual carriageway, you must assess whether the central reservation is deep enough to contain your vehicle. If so, you can cross into the central reservation when it's clear, and wait there until it's safe to join the carriageway. If you're towing a trailer or a caravan, the combined length of your vehicles will probably be too long to sit safely in the central reservation. So, you must wait until it's clear in both directions before joining the dual carriageway. The driver towing the caravan wants to turn right onto the dual carriageway. What should they do? Wait until the road is clear in both directions before turning.